Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Friday Live. Today, we're going to be taking another look at some altered bottles and we're going to use fabric this week. So, of course, we're continuing on with last th week's theme, message in a bottle and um, springing into the new year. So um, I'm fairly excited about this and we're going to be smelling the roses today. So a little message to ourselves through our altered bottle to remember to smell the roses through the year. So that's what we're going to be doing. So my name is Ashley Hay, for those of you who don't know me, and um, I'll show you what we did last week. And if you did miss last week's episode, it is definitely worth watching for a bit of a recap because it will get you motivated to create for 2022. That was the whole idea. And to look back over your 2022 year by casting yourself forward. So if you're curious about that and you missed last Last week's episode then be sure to watch last week and that will give you a bit more background to what we're doing today and of course we also have a wonderful um, announcement at the end so be sure to watch to the end um, because I'm going to be making a little bit announcement about a bit of a challenge for you guys so let's get cracking so let's take a look at what we actually did last week so this was the altered bottle that I did last week and I'm actually really loving the textures and colours on this. So you can see how um, that is really, really gorgeous. It's got some really gorgeous crackles. So I'm actually going to leave it without doing any embellishing. So normally I would dry brush back into this, but I'm quite enjoying the little bit of darkness that it does have with the pop of red coming through. And look what I found, I found the lid. <laughs> So um, we can, of course, I can use some masking tape because it is a little bit plasticky to actually tape the lid and then I can do it with the same textures exactly the same way as I did last week. So that is one possibility, of course, or I could actually build a form on top of here and make it more sculptural and arty. But I think with this one, I'll probably stick with just a little bit of art deco for the home and to house my message for the year um, for 2022. Hey Renee, Cheryl and Carol, lovely to have you here. Welcome. Um, hope Renee you're enjoying swanning around at the Crown. So <laughs> um, sounded lovely. All right, so um, that's that. So a really fantastic thing to do is get a really nice collection of bottles. So I thought I'd use this one today. So uh, this is a Jack Daniel's bottle and it's nice and flat and I love that and because I can actually paint on it as well so how awesome is that so um, I'd quite like to do a summer days one where I'm actually painting on the bottle too take a look at this one how is this isn't that just magnificent so look at that fantastic horse shape that is actually on there and so the possibilities with this bottle are just brilliant so keep an eye out for some special bottles that sort of speak to you and keep them in your little stash and then um, get going so today I did think that um, usually I would actually power text my bottle before I begin. So I would just give it a couple of layers of whatever color I'm going to use so that I've got a base color already on the glass. Um, but I decided I didn't want to do that today because it would mean that you would be seeing lots and lots of um, black and you wouldn't see the detail of what I'm doing. So today I'm going to use the bronze Powtex. So of course the Powtex is brilliant because it is going to harden the fabrics and fibres. It is also going to act like an adhesive onto the glass, which will just be fabulous. Alrighty. So I've got my bronze here. I've also got some bits and pieces, some nice bits and pieces here. Look at this. I've um, got a stash um, so you know we can even put something like this so that was actually some found um, 
it was actually a gift to me in actual fact. It was actually given to me by someone who came to one of my classes. She had a heap of bling with her and um, she said, here, take a couple of mine. And so these um, buckles were gifted to me. And so I thought, well, what better place to put them than onto one of your bottles? So the thing that I do like to do if you're, I'm attaching something like this is I like to do the fabric and fibres first, leaving an area where I want to put it onto. So I do a little bit of a base, put it on, and then I do my finished layers from there. So I won't show you that today, but we'll get cracking. So I've got lots of scrappy pieces, and this is where it's really, really great to get all your scraps. So I've got some scrappy cut off bits. I've got a couple of um, triangly shapes here, uh, which are just, really nice so I like working with triangles and then I've of course got my kebab sticks I've got some latex gloves and I've got uh, some scissors and of course my powtex and a bowl so let's get cracking so give my powtex a good shake before I begin hey Mariana lovely to see you And of course, you all saw Natalie's gorgeous bottle that she did with um, the fabrics and fibres in the um, cover sheet. So um, she, of course, has shown you how to do some textures and lovely rosettes and flourishes, which is actually something I enjoy doing too. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Hey Mel, nice to see you. Thanks for popping in. Thank you. Happy New Year to you too. So I'm going to dip my fabric straight into here. I'll just move it across a little bit so that you guys can see that. Oops, got a splash already. And I'm just going to massage. <laughs> mm. I actually haven't bought my damp cloth that I normally bring, but that's okay. It's always something you forget. <laughs> okay, just rubbing that in and see how I'm checking the fabric. You don't want any bits um, peeking through. And this is where it's really good working with a colour on a lighter piece of fabric because you can see when you've actually missed it and just make sure that you, you've covered all of those areas properly. So I prefer to dip it slightly and then actually manipulate the fabric and work the Powtex through um, the fibres and fabric with a bit of massage so that I'm not having to pull the excess out of the fibres. I just work with it just like that. Alrighty, so I'll put that bit aside. We'll do another bit here. So I like to do a couple of bits before I um, get started because I do like to strip my gloves off and that's where it's handy to have a bowl of water next to you or a little damp cloth so that you can just wipe your hands off. Um, alrighty, getting in there. Who's done their first piece of art for the year? So if you have, let me know what it is you've been doing. I'd love to know and see what you've been up to. Get that nice damp cloth to wipe my hands off with. And I'll just give this a little bit of a wipe there where I got that splash. 
and take the gloves off. Even got red, a red cloth, look at that. Okay, so now I'm just going to get some of the fabric and I'm just gonna go straight on here. Now, it is a little bit oversaturated for my liking, but I'm gonna work with that. Ordinarily, I would just get another piece of T-shirt material and rub, um, work back into it so, to take some of the excess off. So I'm actually going to use this texturally. And so the whole idea is you don't want to just put it down, you want to put it down with some nice um, folds and forms as you go. I also like to keep my hands quite clean too as I'm doing things uh, because I find otherwise I do stick to the Powtex and kebabs are the best tool in the studio. I'm sure you would agree with me. They're fantastic. It stops your my it stops my fat little fingers making everything flat because if I squash everything down then it's going to be quite boring all right so there's one piece on the other thing I do quite like to do I'm not going to do it too much today I've missed a little bit there so just get a little bit more on my finger and just touch that up, is I quite also like to tease the fabric to get a little bit of a um, bit more stretch in it, especially on my dodgy edges where I haven't cut things very well. This one's not really a triangle, it's more like a, a rhombusy shape. But again, I'm going to drape it so that it gets some nice folds and I'm going to put this bit over the top because I like that bit. Look forward to seeing you when you're back home Renee. Have a fun time away. Alice, uh, Renee's just saying that she's made a special Alice in Wonderland piece. So that sounds amazing. I look forward to seeing it when you pop into the studio, Renee. Make sure you bring it with you. Okay, so I'm just going to do a little bit of a curly bit up here. Now, if I do get any on the glass, I can always clean that up later so you can see I've got a little bit on here but it really doesn't matter I can actually do that later now I'm quite liking how that's draping and falling you do get some happy little accidents happening along the way as well and um, of course we're going to do some rosettes and flourishy bits um, but I would like to quite have a bit more fabric coming down here even if I'm putting this onto here, which I may or may not do, depending on what I actually do today. So if I am, I could do something like that, which will work, which is what I had before. So we'll stick with that because then I can always add that bit on if I would like to. Okay, so now we just need to do a bit more fabric. Hey, Robin, lovely. Um, Melanie's just saying um, you're quite elegant putting it on. I'm more like a bull in a china shop when I do mine. I think I'm just feeling a bit elegant today. I'm not always elegant. Sometimes I'm very slapdash and things just get thrown on. So, yeah, it's not always like this. I'm just feeling a bit dainty today maybe <laughs> normally I'm a bit like you're saying a bull in a china shop throw it throw it on <laughs> okay so what do we want to do here so I'm thinking I might do oh I should do another strip of that and then I might do a couple of longy bits like this <laughs> fun 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 Okay, so same, same again. 
um, getting the power tex onto the fabric. Now, I guess while we're doing this, we can also talk about the challenge. So I was going to leave it till the end, but let's just have a chat about the idea. So of course, what I introduced last week was I introduced the idea of message in the bottle, which will be a message to yourself and a reminder for yourself for the year. And I thought, well, to encourage everyone to get cracking with it, let's have a little bit of a challenge in the Powtex Australia Creative Hub on Facebook. And anything that you do, any altered bottles that you make for 2022, I'd love you to post them in there. And then uh, just put a hashtag with altered bottle challenge. Actually, I think we'll call it message in a bottle challenge. <clears throat> because that's really what it's about. So with this one, we're smelling the roses today. So it's a different sort of message. It's not going to be a written message. It's actually a message in terms of the texture and the artwork that we're putting onto the bottle itself. The other thing, of course, that you could do, which would be a bit interesting, would be to really think about it a little bit metaphorically. And uh, Natalie and I were chatting about this the other day and, and she said, oh, you, I could put sand in my bottle <laughs> and pour the sand out. So we'll get Natalie on at some point and we'll have a chat with Nat uh, about what she was thinking about her sand in the bottle. But I'm sure most of you could come up with something that that means. Um, because, of course, you know, what do we have at the moment? There's a lot of um, disruption in our society with everything that's going on with, the, with COVID and happening with that. So, um, you know, what, what's in your bottle? Now, I could go on the back here or I can worry about the back later and do a little bit more later on the back. I quite like the idea of having a little drapey piece down here. I like this drapey piece that's happening over here. And I'm going to go up here. Look at me go. I've, I'll leave that there for now. I'll go back into here. I was just talking about the bottle challenge. See, I distracted myself. So, um, Yes, yeah, so have a think about what sort of bottle you'd like to create. Has anyone done a bottle since last week? Let me know in the comments. You could even post your bottle that you've already made in the comments. So we can all have a look. One more and then we'll get cracking on some flourishy bits. Maybe I'll do two more so we've got a bit more to play with. Ooh, lovely. Just like chocolate. <laughs> I do love the bronze power text. So Carol's just saying, no, she hasn't done a bottle yet, but she will do the challenge. Woohoo! So it's really going to be an inspiration challenge. And what I will do is we'll do this till the end of February and then after um, the end of February we'll feature some of, the, um, some of the pieces that have been created um, on a live and on the cover of the Creative Hub so that people can see some of the amazing creations. So I'd love to see you being inspired so that's what it's all about is being inspired to get creating for 2021 right wipe up my fingers and we'll drape some of this and i'll show you how to do some really lovely little rosetti sort of um, elements on your piece so you can see this is quite nice the way it's shaping up here like even though I've just got it draped off, um, 
we might just go down to the art table and see if I can show you the detail of that. I don't know if you can see that very well. See if I can angle it so you get the light on it. All right, hopefully you're getting the idea though. I hope you can see um, this. We might just need to pull this light down a little bit so that we get some light on the artwork itself. All right, so I'm just going to get this piece of fabric and I'm just going to give it a little bit of a twist. And the fantastic, brilliant thing with the Powtex is that it stays exactly how you do it. Okay, so I've got a nice little rosette here. I'll see if I can lift it up a bit. There we go. It's actually nicer down there. I just moved it so you could possibly see it. Okay, then we can get some more of our rougey bits. And the nice thing with this is you can actually, like I say, you can twirl it around. You can do it on your piece. Um, sorry, I might just pull this a bit like that. But the great thing with the fabric is it's very malleable. And so you can really do anything that you like with it and really create beautiful, beautiful elements. Hmm. Oops. Okay, so when you do it, just get your kebab stick and make sure that you have pressed it down nicely so it's going to stay where you want it to stay. I want this little taggy bit hanging off, a little bit like a leaf. And if it flattens, like if you get everything a bit flat, you can just pull it off and you can re do things. So that is the really brilliant thing is it is very forgiving. So you can't go wrong. So you you just want to really um, play with using the fabric and shaping it and twirling it and leaving little bits tagging off so that you can um, see it. Okay. So there we go, we'll just do another, oh, it's a bit hard, I might just lie this down. Just for a minute. Hey Robin, have you done um, a bottle yet? So what's happening is I've got a lot of Powtex on my fingers now. So I really want to keep my fingers clean because otherwise I start to pull the um, fabric off my piece with the wet Powtex that's on my fingers. So really keep your fingers clean and you'll have much better results. So that's my top tip for today.
All right, so that's looking quite nice now and it's kind of fun. And uh, so I don't know if you can see it, but um, I bet that's better. So I think you can see that a bit better now. And so I can just keep playing with manipulating the fabric and um, really being playful with that. So there we go. So you can see that a little bit now. So that's a bit better. So uh, Robin's just saying that no bottles have been played with yet. She's still working on her girl with the gears. Awesome. I look forward to seeing it when it's finished. So I would just keep layering and adding those little rosetti pieces and of course you know um, I can pay a lot more attention um, to the details when I'm actually doing it off camera but let's do another little bit because I think you can see that better now so I think we need to go down to the art table and have a look there and see how I've just gathered that up. So it's just all gathered like that. And I can actually leave some of this tagging off to be a little bit of a leaf. I can rouge my fabric around and twirl it. And I can use a kebab stick even to at this point to make that happen. So on your artwork, it's a lot easier than off but I think you get the idea there I think you can see that now um, so that uh, you can see that detail but it is a lot of fun playing around with the with these sorts of elements and textures with the fabric and of course I don't have to just leave bits I can actually um, you know cut them off or I can um, or I can make them some nice little taggy, taggy bits that go on. So just twist it around. So that looks quite nice. And then I can put it anywhere that I want to on my piece. So I might go up the neck of the bottle here. This one's looking a little bit droopy, but that's okay. And then I would just keep going. So I can also use some other fibers and fabrics and things that I love to use, of course, you've all heard me say it before, is some lovely mop string. I love to use a bit of mop string. So that literally is off a mop cut up. And of course, with that, you can draw swirls and um, details onto your artwork. So you can swirl it around and you can be quite pictorial and drawn like with that. The other great thing with that is you can also actually shred the fibres so that you get a lot more fibrous elements just like this. And then, of course, you can put your power text on and you can add it onto your piece so that it's got um, a totally different type of texture. It depends what you're doing, whether um, you like like that. So Jennifer's just saying she's tuned in late. Please take let me know what the mixture is that's in the bowl. So what we're using, Jennifer, is we're using the Powtex Universal Medium, um, of course. And so um, it's in the bronze Powtex. So the great thing with this is it is going to adhere to the glass and it is also going to harden your fibres and fabrics and it is absolutely beautiful to work with. So if you haven't used Powtex yet, you are in for a treat. As I'm sure everyone who is on watching will say, yes, it's amazing um, because I know that um, pretty much everyone that's on here loves using, loves using the medium. So if I've got 
if I've got anything that I want to adjust, while that's all wet, I can still adjust and play with um, how it's looking on my piece. I can add more fabric onto there. And if you don't like anything, the fantastic thing is that you can just pull it off and you can redo it. So it's very, very forgiving. So you don't have to, um, you know, worry about getting things right and um, because you can always redo them like I'm doing here. I'm just going to give that a little twist and then I'm going to do another little twisty bit down the bottom here because I can. And then I'm going to use my kebab stick. Just hold those on so my fingers don't pull the fabric off. Okay, so that's I'm quite liking that uh, drape down one side. And of course, like I said earlier, I can also go back over and I can clean up my glass. So I can just get a damp cloth and just carefully clean up around that. Now, when I've got an edge that I don't like, see this cut edge here? It's not very nice. So I can actually stretch that and that just really um, usually just does the trick to make it a lot nicer. There we go. Alrighty, so I hope that you have enjoyed that today. And um, of course, I'm going to, I'll be working on, I'll work a bit more on that this week so I can show you the finished piece next week. Um, I am thinking that I might actually utilise this piece that I've been given here, which is now sticking because I've got a bit of power checks on me. Uh, I may use that, but it might be too much. So we'll see how we go. I'll finish that bottle this week. And then next week I'll show you how to do the embellishing of the colour and we're going to use pearl red, we'll use some terra green and some beautiful bronze gold in the colour tricks pigments that will just be magical on the bronze. So the bronze is a brilliant base colour to actually use. You will love it if you haven't done a lot with Powtex before you definitely want to start with the bronze. So, um, Robin's just saying, do you ever have trouble sticking it to the glass? So ordinarily, like I said before, Robin, at the beginning is I would usually do a bit of um, a Powtex coat on the whole glass, but I really wanted to work on a blank bottle so that you could see, um, so that you could see the elements, which I don't know that I succeeded too much in doing that, but that's okay. Um, hopefully you saw some of those details today and were able to see what I was doing. So I'll watch it back and see how it looks and we will um, need to get the lighting right on these dark colours. All right, so, um, so yeah, it does tend to, like you've seen today, it's a little bit more slippery off the glass surface. If you have pre-primed your bottle with Powtex, it's going to adhere to the Powtex underneath so it will be a lot more um, easier for you to actually manipulate and work with. Um, but there may be times where you want some translucency so that you can actually see through the bottle. Um, so that is totally up to you. Natalie's saying, well, she's still inspired. You've been working with Powtex a long time now, Nat, and um, looking forward to having a chat with you about the message in the bottle and some of the ideas and things that you've been doing. So we'll have to make that happen um, in a couple of weeks and um, 
we'll have a have a little bit of a chat together. So yes, everyone get cracking on your altered bottles. These ones that I'm showing you, they are really quite basic. They're very simple techniques. So I'm not getting too complex in the lives because you guys can take the techniques and you can run with the techniques and then really do some beautiful creative pieces. So I hope that you've got the information that you need. If not, let me know and I'll answer any questions that you've got during the lives. And of course, make sure get cracking onto those altered bottles, join the Creative Hub if you haven't already and post your altered bottles. And don't forget to hashtag message in a bottle challenge and we'll put a little information thing in the group as well to remind you. And at the end of February, we'll feature all the fabulous bottles that have been created and we'll probably feature a few along the way as well. So I can't wait to see what you guys do. Um, I know when we've done challenges before, you've loved it. And so my hope is that this gets you creating for 2022, gives you a bit of a kickstart to get you going this year creatively. And um, I love it when we all come together and um, have the brain's trust of creative ideas happening. So let's go creative tribe, let's make it happen. And uh, I look forward to seeing all your posts and all your work and all your comments. And um, Natalie's just saying she's looking forward to seeing all the Queenslanders come on board because, of course, Natalie is the distributor for Powertex in Queensland. So any of you out there who need Powertex, you're based in Queensland, she is your go-to person and she will help find a trainer near you so that you can uh, find a workshop and do a workshop, which is always wonderful too. So take it easy, guys. Have a fun, creative week. And I look forward to seeing many, many posts in the group. And uh, I'll see you next week. Bye.